48 hours removed from the one night stand Extreme Rules pay-per-view we now build up to the King of the Ring pay-per-view as this right here is the first edition of Velocity as we build up to King of the Ring of course this right here Night Velocity episode 4 the Smackdown week 9 pre-show and we kick things off with one half of the B team in Curtis Axel the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by Bo Dallas, representing the B team from Champlin, Minnesota, weighing in at 228 pounds, Curtis Axel. Of course, Curtis Axel, accompanied by fellow B team tag team partner in Bo Dallas. And well, we did see Bo Dallas in action two weeks ago on SmackDown, of course, in that tag team battle run. Of course, there was a member of each team here on SmackDown, where if Otis was to win, then Head Machinery would not have to defend the SmackDown tag titles last week on Velocity. If any are team member won, then that would be the team to face off against. Of course, Otis was the first one eliminated, and he was eliminated by Jeff Hardy. Yo, Ironically enough, Jeff Hardy would go on to win the Hope Battle Royal, giving the Hardy Boys shots at the SmackDown Tag Team Championships last week in your main event, Velocity. Ultimately leading to the Hardy Boys defeated Heavy Machinery. And well, if anything, Heavy Machinery still have the rear spot for SmackDown Tag Team Championships. But Bo Daz connects back to that because he was in the final three. And if anything, the shock of the whole matchup was actually Bo Daz eliminated Eric Rowan. So, you know, Dallas, he was so close, but yet so far. Final two. Sad enough, got eliminated. Well, can curse Axel? Shouldn't get a victory. So here's Axel's first match here in your mode. Along with that, it's also this man, our troops first match up here in your mode. He probably doesn't appreciate me and rep this rap to the ring. But, yeah, if anything, well, Curse Axel and Archer make the Universe Mode debuts here tonight on Velocity. Curse Axel looks to bring a win to the B team. Dallas currently 0-1. Can Axel get a win on their behalf? Curse Axel Fan Club precedent. Well, that guy was probably the only member of part of Curse Axel Fan Club, but if anything, here we go, referring to the bell. Matchup begins. First velocity. As we build up to the King of the Ring pay-per-view. Along that King of the Ring builds up to SummerSlam. Two months time. Of course, the winner of the King of the Ring tournament. Where it be a member from Raw or SmackDown. They ultimately main event SummerSlam. For either the Universal Championship on Raw. Or the WWE Championship on SmackDown. And oh, there you go. Big bicycle kick right there by our truth from Rock Up, of course, SmackDown's Sheamus. Oh, he's in the King of the Ring tournament. And well, he takes on Randy Orton in the quarterfinals. And it could either be, well, it could always could it either be Heat or Raw or Velocity or SmackDown, depending on Jim Andrews, JBL, or Edge on where they want to put the King of the Ring matchup. But they could actually put the matchup on Velocity. We could actually have. A King of the Ring, whether it be quarterfinal or semifinal matchup, even the finals for a SmackDown at least here in Velocity. All depends, uh, depends on the decision of Edge, if anything, memory snap suplex. And Axel doesn't even get a one count because she just was under the rope. But if anything, kick us off here tonight on SmackDown. Buddy Murphy and Kane. That's right, third and final battle between those two, of course, Buddy Murphy, Mr. Mind Bank. Won the Mind Bank beefcase a month ago. Along with that, of course, Asuka winning it for the woman's side. So, you know, SmackDown, both Money in the Bank briefcases. Along with that, 48 hours ago, the Iconics being in Luxembourg and Nikki Cross. So, the Iconics bringing the women's tag titles over SmackDown. SmackDown currently, they hold everything. Of course, SmackDown exclusive, Cruiserweight Division event exclusive to SmackDown. Buddy Murphy and Asuka represent SmackDown with both. Money in the Bank briefcases, and along with that, the Iconics bringing the women's tag team titles over SmackDown. SmackDown, they currently rule everything here, and they're doing pretty well. 3 0 against Raw when it comes to interpromotional competition. That's the men's Money in the Bank briefcase ladder match, the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, and the women's tag title ladder match. I mean, the women's tag title match, but general, not ladder match. That we had 48 hours ago. So SmackDown currently leads 3 0 in interpromotional competition. Of course, a couple months away from Survivor Series. So a long way from there, but anything now. 
Look at this. That knee across the back, wrenching on the neck here of our truth Starting the ring here. And now Axel trying to wear down Truth here. And Truth can be able to escape the grasp of Curtis Axel. Of course, in tonight's main event, the gold standard, Sean Benjamin's in action. Fresh off from a victory last week over Mike Ness. He faces off against the eight-pack ab man, the premier athlete in Tony Nese. There there's tonight's main event on Velocity. Of course, last week's main event. Hard Boys beating him machinery to become new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Along with that last week on Velocity, it was Miss Wayne Bank defeat Ember Moon. And the open contest will score Sean Benjamin. As I previously mentioned, Benjamin beating Mike Ness. Well, of course, if anything, you would notice that both Pete and Velocity have now switched from three matches down to two. So there's one less spot, there's one less opportunity for some wrestlers on both the Raw and SmackDown roster. But if anything, it's going to make them more hungrier and help build up the competition. That's the goal of shrinking down the matches from three to two for the pre-shows. But now, if anything, our truth currently on the roll here. Taunt towards the crowd, trying to help himself feed off the energy of the crowd, if anything. And now, corner splash right there. Down goes Axel. And oh. And this is the kick. And Curse Axel, of course, you know, he's no slouch himself. Former Incarnate Champion, Curse Axel. You know, he's been to, not really the top of the mountain, but he's been pretty close to the top of the mountain before. Axel, it's been years and years since that past success of being a Paul Heyman guy as well. Along with having the Incarnate title run. You know, victory here, non velocity over our truth. First victory for Curse Axel in years, but potentially, you know, can help build up momentum. Sean Benjamin kind of built up momentum. He got a victory last week. If he gets a second victory in a row, you know, more and more momentum will be built up. Get yourself recognized by Jim Andrew Edge, if anything. And of course, for the Raw side, Jim Andrew JBL. And now here we go. Truth right there. Clock sacks on between the eyes. An open palm uppercut right there. Similar to that of the Big Red Monster. Can, of course, can currently Owen. Two minutes. Well, there you go. Suplex to a stunner. Hold that thought of anything. Center of the ring here, pin the Dickman, referee takes a while, go into position, and it's a two count. Truth pulling out, suplex to a stunner, that caught me off guard. I forget how to speak for a second. If anything, that's a, like I was trying to say. Kane, of course, currently going to, in terms of his battles against Blade Murphy, he lost two weeks ago on SmackDown via a roll-up. And then, 40 hours ago on the One Night Stand Extreme Rules kickoff show, he lost again to Buddy Murphy. This time it was more convinced than fashion, it was via Murphy's Law. But Buddy Murphy, Mr. Mind Bank, 2-0 over Kane. And well, they have their third and final matchup, potentially final matchup, to kick us off here tonight on SmackDown Week 9. See the double X-hand right there by Chris Axel. But kick us off here tonight. Once the pre-show, that's Velocity. So it's SmackDown Week 9's opening contest. Buddy Murphy and Kane, King of the Ring, quarter finals. And of course, so far on the Raw side, thanks we had the Miz beat Sami Zayn last night to open us up on Raw. Let's see if it's Kane or Buddy Murphy that'll be the first to qualify. Well, to advance to the semifinals of anything on the SmackDown side, but now of anything, Curse Axel here has a hold of our Truth, and now Truth find out the grasp here of Axel. He has a couple elbows placed right there to the gut, and now sends Axel into the steel steps here. And Bo Dallas is right there. And Truth is going to keep his distance. That's smart. And then look at this here. I guess Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas are calling an audible. Dallas trying to hype his tag team partner up. They went through a game plan. Is it fully fleshed out? Well, Axel went in there charging head first. And he lands head first on the mat. The line attempted by our Truth. Truth now into a cover. And the ref's in perfect position. And it's a three count. Well, that plan. Completely backfired. You know, Axel and Dallas decide to call change the game plan up a little bit. Change the offensive formation. And well, it didn't work out too well. Truth was lying in wait. And there you go. As soon as Axel enters, enters the ring. Lie detector and the three counts. Alright, Truth gets his first victory here in Eurus Mode. In his first matchup in general here in Eurus Mode. There you go. That suplex stunner right there. Truth pulling all sorts of maneuvers out of the arsenal. That one truly caught me off guard. And then, well, man, they follow suit. Man Slater will be the lie detector. It's a victory for our Truth and it's a loss for Curse Axel. 
And while Bo Das, he doesn't look too pleased with his fellow tag team partner. The B team had a rough start here in your smell. Bo Das lost that battle road two weeks ago. Curse Axel comes up short here tonight. 12 minutes up on Velocity. But well, you know, if anything, that was 12 minutes up tonight. In a matter of moments, a matter of minutes, if anything, in the main event, the gold standard Sean Benjamin, fresh on a victory last week over the miracle Mike Kness. He looks to go 2-0 as he faces off against the Cruise Rate Division's premier athlete in Tony Nese. It's been a while since we've seen Tony Nese. Can Nese pick up some more momentum? And along with that, next week's main event of loss, Dakota Kai and Charlotte Flair. That's right, NXT's Dakota Kai makes a SmackDown appearance, a one-off SmackDown appearance as she faces off against the new SmackDown Women's Champion in Charlotte. That right there will be a non title contest, but you know, interesting matchup and promotional between SmackDown and NXT. And like I previously mentioned earlier on, Buddy Murphy and Kane will open us up here tonight on SmackDown Week 9. But if anything, let's take a recap to what happens 48 hours ago at the one that stand Extreme Rules kickoff show when these two last met. More, if that's the best you got, you're gonna have to do more than that to keep me down. If anything, that spine bust right there kept Murphy down for a good couple seconds. That one rocked him. And now Kane. Oh wait, nope, never mind. Shoulder across the gut. And now look at this Murphy here. The roll up, the exact way. Murphy won. Two weeks go on. Smackdown no. Kane's life probably just flashed before his eyes. Kane lost to that same roll up two weeks ago on Smackdown. Murphy was looking to pull it off on Kane yet again. Almost pinned him a second time in a row. And now Kane though. That was a kick out of two. And I look at this here, young Kane with that claw. That iron claw across the face. Similar to that of the Von Eriks. And now Kane here, wrenching, squeezing across that temple. That's also going to take some breath out of you as well, as well, if anything. And now Murphy here. Look at his feet. He's trying to maneuver around a bit. Kane, he's using his, his, Kane is using his other hand to grab the hand. That has the claw on Murphy for extra leverage and all Murphy finally gets out of it. Went into that arm bar and then snapped it. And now gonna drag the hair of Kane. Use it to his advantage. And Kane goes to the outside and hopes to catch the breather. But Buddy Murphy has to be worn out. I read that claw and oh look at that! Double knees. The double knees straight to the chest of Kane. And Murphy he's also taken out of this equation almost. That took a lot out of Buddy Murphy almost as much as it took out of Kane. And well, Murphy finally, as he stirs to his feet just a little bit, Kane, he's still hurting. The monster has been chopped down. Question is for how long? And now Murphy and Kane, just both so slow. They're taking a beat in here. This is only the first matchup, not even off the main show, but off the kickoff show. And these two already are setting the tone for the rest of the night. The kickoff show and the main show. Let's hear that elbow across the face. And now Murphy. Well it took some time again to get into that cover here. Can that actually cost him? Yes it will. Another two count. And Murphy, he can't really believe it. Well he better believe it. Kane, very resilient. As the years have shown. And oh big shot right there. Murphy he got rocked so hard he went into the corner. And now Kane here. Snake eyes similar to that of The Undertaker. And now Murphy. He stays after that one. Kane, here we go. Sends Murphy for a ride. Murphy was cool, so then now Murphy reverses the choke stem yet again. This time he reversed it in the midst of the movement. And now Murphy gonna take advantage while the knee strike. That one knocks Kane Luffy. That knee across the jaw. Kane is rocked. He had Murphy one second for a choke Sam, and the next he's getting his head knocked out with the knee. And then Murphy's Law. Body Murphy. Murphy's Law. Second time is a charm. And speaking of second time, this is now officially the second time Buddy Murphy has pinned Kane. The juggernaut, the best kept secret, Mr. Money in the Bank, whatever you want to call him. Buddy Murphy has officially pinned Kane twice. Two weeks ago on SmackDown via a roll-up. And, well, here at night, a little bit more legitimately with Murphy's Law. That being said, granted, it took two Murphy's Laws. Kane, he attempted to choke Sam twice, both of which uh, Murphy reversed, if anything. 
And look at this, this one right here, if you asked me, I thought that was going to be it. I thought for a second match in a row that Buddy Murphy would have Kane off guard with that roll-up. However, that was not the case. It was a very close two count that time around. And look at that. That's when Murphy reversed the iron claw with that arm bar and snapping it. You know, Kane, he has that iron claw on for a good period of time. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't have been surprised if Murphy actually passed out from that one. Kane had it in for like a good 20 seconds almost. But that's matter, because at the end of the day, Mr. Money in the Bank, another victory added to his belt. And so the Juggernaut, he celebrates well away to kick off the kickoff show. And well, there you have it. One Night Stand Extreme Rules Perry, one help Perry, but if anything, that was there was the kickoff show. It was the first matchup of the kickoff show. It was a pretty nice way to open things up. Of course, Buddy Murphy and Kane will open oh, yeah. us up here tonight here, when SmackDown begins. But if anything, here. the premier this athlete, Tony Nese, it's been a while, athlete. and he has some things to say. Else. Let's count it out together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight reasons why I'm the premier athlete. Eight reasons why I'm better than each and every one of you. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Long Island, New York, weighing in at 196 pounds, the premier athlete, Tony Nese. And well, if anything, if I could actually remember correctly, last time we actually saw Tony Nese in action, well, it's a couple weeks ago, back when 205 Live was still a thing, before Vince canceled my show. You know, I was the GM of 205 Live, but now I just book stuff in the Cruiserweight Division. And it's under SmackDown Gem Manager Edge's management, too. But, uh, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. But if anything, that's what I saw Tony News was courtesy of me, my booking. You're welcome. Back in the No More Contenders Cruiserweight Title Tournament. To see you face off against Drew Gulak at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. And ultimately, it was won by Humberto Carrillo. Who became No More Contender, came up short against Drew Gulak. From Orangeburg, South Carolina, weighing in at 248 pounds, Shelton Benjamin! And well, Vant and Cruiser Division has been picking up more and more. Gulak, of course, retained the towel against Kalisto 48 hours ago as well. And well, Kalisto, he's had three opportunities. Not really three opportunities, but it's had it's been three matches between Kalisto and Drew Gulak. It was a non towel matchup. Just to give Gulak something to do during the Normal Contenders tournament, building up to Mind the Bank over a month ago. And then, uh, well, follow suit was Kalisto win a triple threat between himself and the other members of Lucha House Party in Grand Metalik and San Dorado. Well, to me, Kalisto won the one, obviously. And then he lost twice to Gulak. One on episode of SmackDown and the other one in their rematch 48 hours ago. So, who can stop the Wrath? Of Drew Gulak, maybe, just maybe, it can actually be Tony Nese and can start with a victory here and night over the Gold Standard. If you ask me personally, I think it will be an upset. Now I count Nese out, but Sean Benjamin, highly, highly decorated. Mobile time former tag team champion. On multiple occasions, of course, held the Intercontinental Championship as well. Former United States champion back in like 08, 09, which still feels like a fever dream that never actually happened. But hey, it did happen. That being said, I was highly forgettable, but still... Regardless, you know, Sean Benjamin, great athlete. But, if Nice gets a victory, major upset in the books if you ask me. And now, oh, uh, well, we're not gonna get a clean break there. The referee trying to separate them two. And Tony Nice with a cheap shot. And Sean Benjamin, I don't think he's too happy. Mocking now, Sheldon. Mocking Sean Benjamin. Gets a form across the face and a body slam inside the ring. For Tony Nese's troubles. That was not that smart. That cheap shot. And then the taunt. The disrespect to your opponent. And now look at the size advantage here. Like what? Sean mentioned like what? 6'2? Tony Nese, fellow New Yorker, might add Tony Nese. 5'8. And oh, God. And he just folds Benjamin upon the impact. Down on the neck. And oh, that's a two count. That's a lot of weight. As well as like what? 200 some pounds? Roughly, give or take. Of Tony Nace just going down on Sean Benjamin. It's a tough kick out. Saw the weight. 
of your not only your opposition but also you know your own weight as well being piled on you. Tough kick out right there for Sheldon. And oh, chop the chest right there and Sean Benjamin answered back here. Mopo chops. Four to be exact. And now Sean Benjamin here has knees in a tough predicament. And oh, hangs him out and dry on the ropes. And a kick to the chest for extra measure. And Tony Nese is in a world of trouble right now. And oh, get to get. You know, gotta think perhaps Chris Chip and Drew Gulak watching on backstage. Fanny and Drew Gulak. He's gonna be in tonight's main event, fresh off of Victor Kalisto at One Night Stand Stream Rolls. He faces off against, you know, a very worn out opposition in the WWE Champion Kofi Case. That's right. Champion versus Champion. Hold that thought at all. Tope Kahilo. Sheldon Benjamin launches himself. Flies. Tony Nace was looking to catch a braver. And well, he probably got one for like maybe a second and a half. Sheldon Benjamin was staying on him. Not giving him any time to rest and try to get back on the horse, so to speak. I've never used that analogy before. First time for everything. And now Benjamin sizes up his opposition. Tony Nice still feeling the effects. And now here we go. And oh! Catch a shot in the midair, reverses that. Perhaps potential crossbody look like into a power slam. And oh, come on. Nice taunting yet again. Of course, the Eagle Maniac, Tony Nice, for lack of a better terminal. It's hung out dry yet again. Didn't capitalize. No desperation pinfall. No nothing. Caught Sean Benjamin midair, decided to taunt and gave enough time for Sean to recuperate. And now Sean Benjamin wrenching down on the arm of Tony Nice, trying to wear him down a little bit. Of course, Tony Nice with a speed advantage. Obviously, he has to cruise away in this situation, so he has a speed advantage. And so, Sheldon, he knows that he's going to have to try to wear down the faster opposition. And now, with this headlock, if anything, scratch that because Tony Nace trying to get out of it. A couple well-placed elbows would do so. And now here we go. Oh, takes out the legs and now ground and pound here. Sheldon has to cover up. Oh, he's still got a couple good licks in, did Tony Nace. And now Nace now. Looking to size up Sean Benjamin. Former kind of champion, not looking too good at the moment. The ground and pound, the number on him. And now Nice here. Here we go, springboard over the referee as well. Okay, that was amazing. And he completely misses. No water in the pool, crashes and burns. All that for nothing. Wow, all that build up for none. That was disappointing. You know, Nice representing still my cruiserweight division. Technically mine and edges, but you know. I'm the main man when it comes to cruiserweight division, but like, yeah. Kind of embarrassing us there. But if anything, Sean Benjamin now looking to stay on these. Of course, Cruiser Division, you know. They've been showcased a lot of anything. Of course, we had Kalisto teaming up with Incarnate Champion Dolph Ziggler last week. Well, new Incarnate Champion Dolph Ziggler. Of course, at the time last week, it was before he defeated Jinder Mahal uh, 48 hours ago. But, you know, it's Kalisto and Dolph Ziggler uh, teaming up against Drew Gulak and Jinder Mahal. And well, in tonight's main event on SmackDown, Drew Gulak face off against the champion Kofi Kingston non-titled contest. Cruise with Vision, you know. They can hang with the best of them. And Tony Nace, he's proven that so far. Even though he doesn't look like he's proven it right now. But, uh, he's lasted a while here against Sean Benjamin. And now, uh, um, Nace, he lords Sheldon in. Mocking Sean Benjamin again. This time around, Nace can answer a bit. Sweeps out the legs. And Tony Nace now back. With the taunting. Hey, at least he backed it up there. Moments ago, he was almost going to get clothesline out of his boots. Ducked it. And just a flurry of strikes to follow suit. And Sean Benjamin, now he's down near Tony Nace here. He could pull off a major upset and all. Guess that double axe handle that looks like a knee drop. Or a knee drop that looks like a double axe handle. And now Benjamin shoots to have and it's only a two count. And Nace, he can't believe it. But he needs to stay focused here. Can't go back to Tom, can't go back to trying to be the showman that you are, especially against a great caliber athlete like Sean Benjamin. And now Benjamin here in a tough spot. That neck being wrenched, that knee across the back as well. Adds more added pressure. Well, Sean Benjamin is going to get out of it. And now here we go. Look at this. Oh, kind of like the T-bone suplex. 
Remember when that used to be Sheldon's finish? Yeah, me neither. And that right there, she had another two count. And Sheldon, well, he thought that was it. Looks the referee's in the eyes, trying to make sure that that was actually a two count. Yes, it was. And now here we go. Wait a second here. Sheldon Benjamin, all sorts are wrapped up like a pretzel. Oh, no, pump handle slam. Down into the mat. Quickly into the car. Referee takes a while to go into position. That right there potentially just cost Tony Mason yesterday. If the ref was in perfect position to begin with, I think perhaps Tony Nese just pulled off the upset. Ref took a while to get into position. And that actually probably cost Tony Nese in the long run here. But Nese going to stay on Benjamin. And now, here we go, Tony Nese looking to end this matchup once and for all here in the main event of Velocity. And now, off the ropes he goes, the running Nese, that unprotected knee across the face. Takes down the knee pad. And the knee does the rest of the damage. Sheldon Benjamin is done for. No, he's not. Kicking out at two. And Tony Nese is in disbelief. Rightfully so. The unprotected knee. Almost knocking Benjamin out of consciousness. And on Nese, he is in disbelief. Pleading with the referee. Trying to make sure that that was in the three count. And on the referee, he's had enough. And Nese is trying to walk away here. Sheldon Benjamin is back up and knee. And a knee right to the back. Tony Nese, no, super kick. Nese has no clue where he's at. He just got caught off guard right there. And pay dirt. Sheldon Benjamin takes advantage of the strike of Tony Nese. The pay dirt connects, and it's a three count. And that right there, Tony Nese, trying to plead with the referee, trying to tell him that that was actually a three count. That ends up being his downfall. Gives Sean Benjamin enough time to recuperate. Gets that knee across the back. Of course, Tony Nese didn't see it coming. We'll follow suit. The super kick sending Tony Nese's head into the seventh row. And then the pay dirt as well. And you know, that right there, that pump handle slam. Initially, I thought that could have been it, but there you go. Referee took a while to run over, get into position. Potentially costing Tony Nese the matchup. And then, of course, the running knees, that protected knee strike to the face that was two and three quarters so close be it so far and then ultimately the super kick which yeah, followed suit of the running knee to the back and of course the pay dirt oh no it leads to Sean Benjamin's second victory in a row Benjamin 2-0 start victory over Mike Ness last week to open up the Nyon Velocity victory over Tony Nese to end off the Nyon Velocity. Pretty good start right there for Sean Benjamin. The gold standard looking pretty golden so far. But of course, if anything, in a matter of minutes, it is now time for the actual main show. Smackdown Week 9, Buddy Murphy and King. Third matchup between the two. Who will come up victorious in the King of the Ring quarterfinals? First matchup for Smackdown. The Miss is already advanced for Raw. And along with that, tonight's main event. Champion vs. Champion, Christian Champion, Drew Gulak, WWE Champion, Kofi Kingston. Something has to give. Who is the better champion to represent SmackDown? We shall see when SmackDown Week 9 begins.